Hello all, wishing you all a happy new year 2023. Welcome to public cloud design tips and tricks again. Today's topic is Azure file transfer. The problem statement is what are the best possible ways to transfer files in Azure. Now before we deep dive into the methodologies, uh, let's have a discussion on why a file transfer is required. So nowadays many organizations uh, are moving from off-prem from on-prem environment to cloud environment due to their digital transformation journey. And why do we need a file transfer? Because of better data management, because of efficient data governance to reduce the cost, to minimize the dependency and to enable application mobility. So these are the reasons why we need to do file transfer in cloud environment. Okay, now coming to a very typical uh, scenario where in the diagram you can see there is an on-prem environment and in that on-prem environment there are various storage systems and appliances where data files are there and in the right side this is the Azure public cloud platform where you can see different Azure storage services like Azure Blob, Azure Files here, ADLS Gen 2, ADLS stands for Azure Data Lake Storage. And they are connected with a private connectivity using express root circuit. So normally in a file transfer scenario, what happens is using this private connectivity, the files get transferred from on-prem to Azure public cloud using various methodologies. So this is a file transfer topology. Now coming to AG copy. What is AG copy? AG copy is a command line tool for copying data to or from Azure Blob Storage, Azure Files, and Azure Table Storage using simple commands. Okay, so in a nutshell, it is a executable tool basically that can be installed in your machines and that will help you to transfer various Azure files, various files from on-prem environment to cloud environment. Now this also can be used to transfer file within the cloud between two storage accounts. Okay, so now before you start using AG copy, there are certain steps you need to do. The fun, first one is download AG copy. So AG copy, the latest version is V10, is an executable we have already discussed and can be downloaded to any of your folders within your system. Now the Executable is available either in a Jeep or a compressed format for different flavor of OS and different based on different scenarios, the topology that you want to use for your transfer, you, you may need different version. Okay. Now, once you download the AG copy executable, then you have to run the command. So, what is run AG copy? It enables AG copy to your system path. So first, you have to enable your AG, uh, AG copy executable to your system path. And once you have done that, then you can use either AG copy or dot slash AG copy in PowerShell command to run the executable. So basically, you have to, using this uh, command line uh, command, you just give the source and destination path respectively to transfer your files. Now, once you have that everything ready, then first you have to authorize the AG copy. So there are two ways authorization can be provided using the command basically. So how that authorization happens using SAS token, which is a shared access signature token and using Azure Active Directory identity. Okay, so these are the two ways you can do the authorization before you start transforming your Azure files from your local systems or the on-prem systems to the cloud environment okay now the these are the supported methods uh, for different flavor of storage services in azure and this is i have captured from microsoft side okay so if you see uh, there are three flavors blob storage hercule namespace is idls and file storage and then supported methods of authorizations are mentioned here. For blob storage, it is Active Directory and SAS. 
for adls it is azure active directory and sas and for file storage it is sas only okay so once you are authorized and ready to do then you can transfer the data so if the data is transformed from on prem the executable also can be installed and authorized from the designated source okay so that means from the on prem environment you can start using the executable and you can start doing your copy activity okay the data can be transferred across systems as well for the using ag copy okay now at any point of time if you want to know more about ag copy then there is always a help command ag copy minus h is the help in command line and that provides you all the details of different possibilities within ag copy okay i have captured this link for your reference and from microsoft site where you can go and deep dive more into ag copy now what is storage explorer so the second method is storage explorer so azure storage explorer explorer is an standalone app that makes it easy to work with azure storage data on windows mac or linux flavor okay so this is nothing but a ui based tool okay where you can copy your files from source to destination okay there are different other uses of also azure explorer but one of the uses is file transfer now what are the steps the same thing you have to download a, a storage explorer so where do you need to download the storage explorer if you are really working or transferring file uh, from a on prem system to off prem system then storage explorer uh, is one option where you can install storage explorer in your local or on prem systems but there is also a capability within azure portal where you can directly get a storage explorer and you can do the transfer activity okay now the same authorization is also required here where you have to uh, you have to fast uh, you know uh, once you are using a storage explorer outside azure boundary then you have to fast sign in and select for azure subscription and corresponding resource group uh, which is azure resources and after that you can attach the storage resources okay now to work with the storage resources please ensure that the user who has started or who has initiated the file transfer or who is going to initiate the file transfer should have the corresponding rbac capability okay for example storage contributor role data contributor role that is required to you know move a file from a source to destination it means writing some in the target area okay so those kind of rbac roles you have to ensure or to check before you start the movement okay now when you are actually signing into a storage account or started working in the uh, on the movement part then you always you can always use a storage account connection string with a sas token okay so what is a connection string connection string will let you you know help you to connect to that particular storage with a url and sas token is nothing but a authentication token that will give you access to you know act or do something on that storage okay so these are the store steps basically so first is download okay then sign in into the corresponding azure resources okay then get the proper rbac role to start working on that and use the sas token to connect to that particular storage within a storage account okay again to get more into it you can always refer the link from microsoft i have given here now the third and uh, you know most popular you can say uh, methodology is azure data factory okay so azure data factory is a azure managed service that is used basically to data movement or file transfer from a source to des destination okay and where it is used it is normally used to do a high volume transfer okay from on prem to cloud or within cloud itself now there are three kind of patterns available within azure data factory based on different requirement okay the so first one is self hosted runtime integration so where it is used it is used when you when the when the data 
transfer happens in a private network okay for for example let's say you have a on prem environment and there are files sitting in the on prem environment and you want to transfer the data to azure cloud using a private network okay so in that case self hosted runtime integration is required where the compute resources also are sitting in a private network so that is self hosted runtime integration now what is your integration runtime it is more a microsoft managed uh, runtime environment where the compute resources that is responsible to do the trans uh, data transfer sits on microsoft data center okay so it is more a public and scope to microsoft data center so that is azure integration runtime this is also used when you do not have a requirement of data security and you are okay with you know exposing your ips to microsoft side so that is where you can use that one now managed vnet integration runtime the third uh, type pattern is more a hybrid topology okay where the compute resources are sitting on azure data center and the private network still stays your own network boundary or the organizational network boundary so that is more a hybrid scenario okay so typically these are the three scenarios based on your requirement you can choose what to do when you are doing a file transfer so in this diagram if you see there is a on prem system and the right side is the azure and there are three kind of patterns sitting within the azure azure ir managed with net ir and such ir now what are the steps for this one so steps are a link service can be created to file system using idf control plan ui okay so idf always use a control plan ui and from that ui you can always create a link service mapping source to destination now there are connectors are available within idf to connect to various on prem or off prem storage okay so those connector will be responsible to create a linking pin between your source to destination now after that you can always choose a integration runtime we have already discussed three type of scenarios or patterns based on your requirement now authentication can be done to get access to the source system for example you can always go for a uh, different authentication technique for example like a simple user id password or a you know token based authentications whatever uh, based on your design that is required you can use that to authenticate yourself to the source system as well as the destination system now once those steps are done you can start copying the activities using that link service from your source to destination so that is how you can transfer your files using azure data factory and these are the high level steps you can follow again i have given a reference link where you can go to the link and exactly find out what are the what are the steps required to do this you know four or five steps before you do a data transfer activity or the file transfer activity so on a high level these are the most important three you know methodologies that can be used during a file transfer from on prem to off prem or within the cloud environment from on prem to cloud or within the cloud environment based on your requirement there could be other scenarios also or other possibilities also where you can you know design your file transfer topology but usually ag copy storage explorer and azure data factory these are the common three you know methodology that is used for azure file transfer when you are doing a file transfer from on prem to cloud or within the cloud systems okay so that's it for file transfer today please go so all the links i have already given just to get a deep dive into it and do some hands on as well thank you and have a good day